What inspired me to make this course is that as a teacher, I was never really satisfied with anything out there. And then once I started, I thought, why not make it with a video so that people can really learn on their own? And if they want to take lessons, it's good too, but at least they can get a very solid foundation by themselves. It starts from the very beginning. Turn your head to the left slightly. Bring your flute to your head. Don't bring your head to your flute. Be careful with that. I'm going to take you from the very beginning. You don't have to practice always while you're blowing in the beginning because you don't see your fingers. And sometimes for beginners, it's a bit confusing. So it's okay to also just practice moving your fingers by themselves. We're going to take each lesson piece by piece. 16th notes, you have four of them in one quarter note. And they go like this. Tiri, 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you have four in one beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is the way I teach my students, making sure that the foundations are solid so that you can become a good musician. Ah, you can also do it like that. Just change the way you support the air. And above all, having the joy to play music. And after that, once you're comfortable with it, you can do it all at, at once. Like B, D, B, D, B, G, B, G, G, E, G, E, F, A, F, A, G, B, G, B, A, C, A, C, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, B. At the speed that you can control. I'm Amélie Brodard and these are your 15 first flute lessons. Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk Podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes4sale.com. So that's flutes4sale.com, flutes4sale.com. Just be sure to use that code TFC for all those perks, and a little bit of that does go our way. Another sponsor as well, ourselves. We have a store. If you haven't noticed yet, we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com. We have some shirts and posters and things like that over at Teespring. So you can definitely go there and get some merch, posters, whatever you'd like that we have. It will be there. You'll probably notice it under our videos. If you're interested, be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com. That helps us out immensely. So yeah, on with the show. Hi everybody, welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Emily. How's it going, Emily? Good. How are you? Good. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Hi, everyone's saying hi from France, hi from South Dakota, hi from Scotland, hi from Germany, hi from France, hi from Turkey, hi from Belgium, hi from Stratfire, England, hi from Brazil. Holy smokes, so many mm -hmm. highs from everywhere. Yeah. We're also, uh, uh, it's still going on, this uh, situation that we're in, when everyone's yeah. inside. Hopefully everyone's staying safe and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, this is the show where we answer all your questions live here on YouTube. Uh, it's the live uh, podcast, so if you're listening to this in podcast form, be sure to meet us at the end of every month, usually the first, uh, the last Sunday of every month. Uh, we do this live, and you can leave your questions uh, below in the chat if you're watching this on um, YouTube, or if you want to leave a voicemail, go to anchor, like the, an anchor of a boat, dot fm slash flute, so anchor dot fm slash flute. And there you can leave a voicemail for us. We can play back on the show, uh, and those are always usually fun to do sometimes. So yeah. So we're going to answer some questions. I saw a question uh, in the comments uh, a few seconds ago that w was really interesting and actually coincides to like our book and stuff. And that comes from uh, King Kasim. And he says, how would you all recommend starting to teach myself before I get a teacher? I think our book is perfect for that. <laughs> in yeah, fact, it's, totally. it's why we did it because a lot of people were asking about self-teaching. And so 
we have a website Musigy. Yeah, Musigy dot com. Yep. And if you go there, there's a beginner book with the videos that mm-hmm. go with it. And you can get only the PDF if you want, or you can or order the book. Mm-hmm. But when you order the book, you still have access to the PDF. So while it's in the mail, you can start. It's true. And um, like it covers the basics and it's it, it brings one thing at a time. Like mm-hmm. it's very um, progressive. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good way to learn by yourself. Mm-hmm. That's a bit less stressful than trying to figure out yourself how to where to start and where what's, to start, yeah. what's the next thing what's the you next should step, learn, yeah. you know? And there is sort of, there is an order to things for sure. Um, so, you know, it can feel overwhelming when you have so much information online. Like there's other people that write so much different yeah. things than uh, us, for instance, than others. So it's really, it's it can be difficult. And yeah. even like theory, I put what you need to play those pieces, but I'm not teaching all the theory that there is to know, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> because it can become very overwhelming and confusing if you get too much information at once. Totally. Or you didn't master one thing and then... Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about yeah. all things So flute. I think that's a good way to start. The book can also be used with the... It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's all good. Yeah, so the yeah. book can also be used for with a teacher, but it's it was uh, meant to be able to learn on your own. Yeah. I'm pretty proud of that uh, that thing. I think it's well done. Totally. Yeah. Uh so yeah, We're go check it out. We're working on the next one. Oh yeah, that we Should put out a post on face we put a post on Instagram about uh, your whole table full of <laughs> stuff <laughs> and that's what goes into it, you know, a couple months worth of that, you know, trying to put things together and uh yeah, the yeah, intermediate and deciding book, yeah. what I'm going to put in there, how Yeah. you know, in what order, yeah. how I'm going to bring yeah. dif- new things yeah. so that it's digestible yeah exactly but it is gonna be bigger it's gonna have a lot more stuff than the first one yeah it's um, like 20 lessons plus supplementary yeah. studies and pieces yeah at the end. and so by the end of that you're gonna get pretty pretty good i think but people get to have a lot of fun with that people have a lot of fun with the beginner one too intermediate level really. yeah like yeah 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 you know basically you can play for the rest of your life with pleasure kind of after that well you know all your fingerings you know yeah. like y- yeah yeah and then after you that like if you want to do yeah. That, yeah and after that you know if you really want to do more maybe a teacher can lead you to further heights you know as yeah. well like you do a lot of uh, you have a studio online and yeah. uh it's uh people really uh seem to like it a lot yeah and even if you do it while you're self-teaching you don't have to always adopt the one lesson a week approach right. maybe some people might want to self-learn but Sometimes they have things that they need exterior help with. Mm-hmm. They can take two, three lessons and then continue on their own for another year. Totally. You know? Yeah. Uh, what else do we got here? We got some other questions. I got some questions uh, written out, but we'll do some here in the chat. So this is the time to do it. Um, Mary, uh, Mary Ariana, she wants to know, how do you guys go about tuning your piccolos and keeping them in tune? Well, I would like to do a video about tuning two piccolos just for fun and see like with the <laughs> tuner how it looks and stuff. And that would be pretty amazing. But like tuning practice for piccolo is pretty much the same as tuning with the flute in a way because uh, but there are different tendencies like the this. You have to kind of know what your own piccolo mm-hmm. tendencies are. Yeah. And sometimes some notes have different tendencies on the flute and the piccolo. Yeah. So it's good to practice with a tuner so yeah. that you know the tendencies are of your instrument and mm. then. Tuning on a flute or a piccolo, is, like tuning at the yeah. beginning, is a good thing, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But it's l- it has its limits mm-hmm. because it's so easy to change the pitch by a very small movement. Totally. That you also have to know the tendencies of your instrument, work on your ear, and also sometimes it's kind of unfair when you play the piccolo because let's say you play in an orchestra, mm-hmm. and someone else is out of tune with in the chord. Mm-hmm. But since you're the highest note, you're the one who's going to sound like it's vibrating mm-hmm. more because mm-hmm. the vibrations are closer. And you're the one who's going to sound out of tune. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You're always a guilty one when you play the piccolo. Exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's tough for that. Yeah. I would encourage also playing with drones. Uh, and when I say yeah. drones, uh, a lot of people don't know what that is. So it's just like a tone that's playing a frequency like A440. Right? Some tuners have it. I know a lot of apps have it, but it does drain the battery on your phone if you do it on your My thing. My tuner it, has it. Your tuner has it, which is good, it. yeah. And So sometimes let's say I practice a scale, I can put G and then I play my G major mm-hmm. scale. 
then I can adjust every note to the G yeah. and listen to the the waves, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So hopefully that helps. But like practicing it, you're doing it five minutes a day for a while, your ear starts getting to know uh, what to hear, what to listen for, and then your body and the way you play will adjust and yeah. you adjust yourself and tr practice doing that. If you have, question of practice. Like right now it's difficult to do that uh, because we can't go and see friends. But yeah, and play with others. One yeah. day it will be over. Yeah. And if you can have friends and even do uh, your sound and technique exercises mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. but you you get to listen to mm -hmm. the yeah. other person at the same time as you're playing, it's... But drones are a good way to yep. do it too. Totally. Or even like uh, if you use apps like uh, Tomplay, and you play with uh, an accompaniment. Yep, that's uh, you're training your ears. You're training your ears too. Because they're not changing; they're staying yeah. in tune. And or then even if you like a, a version of a piece that you're learning on uh, on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you play it with the with it, you'll hear the. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's pretty much the same thing to learn to play in tune on the flute and the piccolo. I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, Patty Johnson wants to know how often do you get your flute overhauled, new pads and such? So it depends on flute. Eight to ten uh, years, I guess. Whoa, no! <laughs> we made a whole documentary about that. <laughs> I think I waited too long. You waited last too time. long. You waited about three or four times longer than you should. Oh, no. uh, professional flutists, you know, they uh, usually you and if you want to keep everything intact, usually if you're playing a lot, two to three years you should get them replaced all your pads oh yeah oh yeah because if you're playing every day it non-stop how much you play. that's what i'm saying if you're a professional flutist is I, I think i mentioned that yeah so but like let's say every year you should get it cleaned uh, and adjusted yeah look that eventually the person will tell you now it's time yeah. for an overall cleaning and just things are usually about a fifth less the price than an overhaul like yeah but um but if you're playing casually and you're not playing outside too much and you're just kind of playing for fun and there's no elements and you're not necessarily Keeping doing humidity in yeah your not necessarily doing all those things um you know maybe three to five years getting new pads oh yeah and like traditional pads you know like I just normal traditional pads like eight years no because if you're using them a lot you won't you, eventually a lot of them start getting uh, moving they start moving around regardless then, then and then make the mechanism mechanism can get all bent up because you're putting different pressures on these metals and on the rods and all those things and then it means more fixing yeah. later is it possible like i i know someone who waited a long time to uh, get it overall mm -hmm. and then it was more difficult to play but now that you say that you know if the mechanism adjusted to pads being uneven and then you put even pads is it possible that then it's... Oh, that's why the mechanism now has to be fixed too. Yeah. Yeah, so of course. So that makes it more way expensive. more expensive and complicated. Totally, totally. So it's a question of balance of those types of things. And uh, there are very expensive flutes out there that have synthetic pads, which last even longer. Uh, and also have certain mechanisms that make things... Uh, have less... To make things... Uh, makes less maintenance happen. But those ex are flutes are expensive and they're not foolproof you know things just wear and tear things rub the gear the the rods rub with the metal because you're using it's a machine you know machines wear out eventually and it's made of silver not stainless steel you know stainless steel is more durable than say silver or gold those are softer metals, types of metals yeah. and uh, you lose material and so yeah they have to when the repair person has to repair different parts of the flute mechanism they sometimes have to stretch out the metal to compensate from that loss of metal in between certain rods and there's it's a whole thing but yeah but there's things you can do that uh, makes things longer like the cork and the flute you can replace it with a delrin which is a type of plastic uh cork which is easy to install um i think there's a lot of companies that make them and have detailed instructions and you never have to replace your cork again and that's kind of helpful and also helpful for the environment and the sound people say that it sounds better there's more of a seal because with cork cork does shrink and expand mm. because of the environment and you do get a less of a seal and all those types of things so hopefully that answers your question um so yeah um what else that we got here we got uh, a lot of people saying hello 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 how can you make, oh, Putrui wants to know, well, actually, let's go to this one first. Uh, Yvonne Edge wants to know, they're interested in Woodify. Wow, we did Woodify a long time ago, two yeah. years ago. It's part of that whole entire world of, of um, 
like uh, left frack and yeah we don't use any of those we still have woodify here but we we haven't used it in a while we kind of just uh, looked at it during that time yeah we played with it a little um, bit but i don't know i i don't find a need for it for myself same probably maybe for you i don't know i don't know if those things are a bit psychological yeah. or if they really work or yeah there's a whole entire thing on facebook i think uh last time i checked a lot of people talk about that like what is is does it work i know a lot of universities did a couple studies i think in colorado they might have correct me if i'm wrong but um that tested those types of things and they found that really doesn't really make too much of a difference or no difference at all but you know it's uh it's to the person's uh yeah. taste you know and it was it was affordable this one the yeah Wi-Fi very affordable, is affordable yeah. and if it makes you happy and if you feel yeah. like your sounds better yeah you know i saw somebody do uh wrap an elastic band around the head joint and then use the freck and there was no sound difference to the listener and uh that was quite a little test i saw that on facebook it was just like a and i was like oh boy <laughs> and why just to make it more tight yeah like well it's that's it's just adding more material on top of the head joint oh, okay. so it's so the equivalent it's just, vibrate. yeah it doesn't from what was being said in that thing is that regardless if it's a metal or if it's rubber contact doesn't really do much except you know force oh. you to play more a little bit because you're adding material you but i don't know that's a more it's material a lot of, vibrate yeah it's a bit like some flutes have a 14 uh, wall and yeah some 16 thicknesses and of walls and, totally and, and also extensions on on foot joints yeah i'm planning to do some 3d printed experiments for us once i get a 3d printer <laughs> and then we can um do like extension tests because there's a lot of interesting things that you can add extensions without holes meaning the more you put energy in the more energy comes out so that's you get louder mm -hmm. but that's by adding extensions not necessarily adding on top of it you're actually adding an extension on the tube but you're also increasing pitches or uh, you're also adding more pitch i guess right you're adding more yeah tone so there are holes but there's a lot of experimentation that i'm going to be gonna try and hopefully we can also 3d print a head joint <laughs> but if it's not included in the mechanism it means that if you wanted to play a b let's say yeah it would automatically play a b flat that's or correct a or there yeah. are some devices actually add holes so that okay. it stays in pitch but it does i see add something but I, i'd be curious about how those things work yeah. these gizmos and, like and what gadgets about the ergonomy of it and how yeah. heavy it is because if you add more oh, yeah on the on the end of yes. it it's not the same as adding close to the right. uh, head joint exactly you know? and that's where weight, yeah i would be but i don't think it's a matter of the closeness of that joint i was about to say like it could be just down to the actual head joint the lip where you where you first produce the sound i think is makes the the biggest difference of yeah. anything else how the head joint is cut yeah really yeah. would and be man. the biggest difference yeah and that's what i want to kind of make a bunch of like 3d printed head joints with different cuts different types of designs okay. inside to cause who knows what we can try that and that could be pretty fun that's cool yeah we'll see uh so yeah that's hopefully that answers your question about left wreck and or woodify whoops woodify because we uh we got woodify the nice guy at woodify he sent us a, a couple he's super nice yeah. amazing uh and creative person yeah yeah uh what else do we got it's here interesting because like let's say if you want a thicker yeah yeah I get totally it. yeah uh put oh my god puteri uh wants to know how can you make tonguing sound clearer or clearly? Okay, well, you need air because tonguing really is cutting the air. So you mm -hmm. have your air stream going and then you use your tongue to cut, but you have to remove your tongue so that it's not in the way of the air. Mm -hmm. So that the t happens when you release the tongue. Mm -hmm. So maybe don't focus too much on uh bringing it forward as much as bring it back yeah instead of i don't know if uh if it's clear but it's really about and also like you have to know where like put your tongue in the right spot but usually if you do the sound t ta ta tu tu any sound like that it's just be observant of where you put your tongue mm-hmm the tip of your tongue and then uh, do it while you blow <laughs> and make sure that your tongue is not in the way of the air that it's not disturbing the air it's just cutting it and letting it uh -huh. 
flow like yeah. out because you don't want to have your tongue too high and that it's disturbing the airstream. That's a good point. So that's a good starting ground for sure. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, this is a great question. Soul Breather wants to know, what is the main income of a flutist and how many years have you been playing? Uh, well, you've been playing for, well, at least two decades. Uh, yeah. I would well, say close to, I would say same. Yeah. Close. 25, 20, yeah. eight years. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. I would say around that too, same. Yeah, so, a yeah. long time. Main income of a flutist. That's it, a big question. It's a, It depends so much on, on the flutist. Mm -hmm. um, some people play in big orchestras that pay enough that you don't have to uh, do much yeah. more. Uh, sometimes they also teach. Some people do pickup orchestras or smaller orchestras. Yeah, Usually they have to right. make to do more yeah. orchestras and travel around. Exactly. And uh, have students. Mm -hmm. And um, some people, there's less work in yes. studio now. Mm -hmm. And studio, you mean like recording studios for movies and all yeah. those things like that. Yeah. Like my... my um, there's a lot of remote work, though. One of my though. teacher in university, he said that maybe 20 years ago... Mm -hmm. He had every week he mm -hmm. would do it. Now it's every... Sometimes there's years he doesn't even yeah. have one. Yeah. Like there's less of that because of uh, MIDI and yeah. all that stuff. That's a bit better now. And, and synthetic sound. Uh, yeah. And like simulated yeah. sounds, I mean. Yeah. yeah. So... But there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's even... You can... St I know there's some people that have uh, full studios of 40 students at home privately and that's all they do and they... Yeah. make a living some people um, play uh, weddings funerals yeah. all those things totally S some people have um, a studio a in studio, that yeah you know exactly or a combination of all those things yeah. a little bit of each but um you know you're not going to get a million you're not going to be uh, a millionaire very fast by doing this it's not that type of uh you know no but, if but you, uh, if it's a regular that makes wage, you happy. yeah. But like a regular wage, uh, it can be done, you know. And some people also regular salary, sorry, have um, have a double professional life. <laughs> yeah, so multiple. They have yeah, totally. Some people are lawyers and still play professionally. Yeah. Or there's a that Juilliard effect thing. Like they did that study about like what people did after like other professions, or they did uh, they kept playing but they did like you said a lawyer or they were a teacher or they were yeah. something else you know because like uh, my first teacher he had his master's in flute but he also had a master's in law mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was a lawyer for the musicians union <laughs> right and he was playing in a big orchestra yeah so it teaching. still fell, it so still fell in yeah. he was doing all those things so yeah. you don't have to um put one tag on yourself yeah don't like, limit That's yourself yeah what i have to be or nothing else like you mm -hmm. can be many things you can be a yeah it doesn't make you less of a musician no. because you're doing all. other stuff Not it just all. makes you more yep you're just experiencing more in life and, totally. and uh you know so yeah so that's uh, that's really d different from each person yeah you know exactly. like us it's uh, it's a bit different because of our YouTube channel and our book. Yeah. And, but n most flutists don't necessarily uh, take that route. Exactly. Either, so. But you can learn those things. Like again, not limiting yourself, learning new things that could apply that you could apply to uh, your uh, creative endeavors. You know. Yeah. There's no no race. I, I always say that to people. There's no race. The only race is against you is against you is against yourself. And so once you get over that, you can really, you know. Yeah. Figure it out, you know, whatever and your like path is. like wondering what do you like to do? Yeah. How can you make money with it? Yeah. And where's your, where's the people that might like what you have to offer? Yeah, yeah exactly. And how can you monetize it? Because all, we all have to yeah. live, live in off of our work. World. We have to live off of our work, you know. <laughs> you that's know? A, Yeah, you have to live off it's of your uh, work. Love is beautiful and uh, music is beautiful, but we all have to eat and have yeah. a roof over our heads so. and a lot of people like music and they want to learn music so that's where you could come in you know like to help to yeah. do that and that's where and they're willing to pay it you know so that's uh, a beautiful thing and it's a uh, it's been like that since the dawn of time <laughs> since uh yeah. since uh transit uh, studio uh, recording i think there's a lot of uh, things now online like it's a bit different people yeah um do it remotely, remotely from yeah their house there's a lot of remote work yeah so yeah there's 
there's different ways. There's really. options, yeah. And never be afraid to ask questions uh, and reach out to people now. Now we can reach out to anybody almost virtually so easy and so fast. Uh, if there's somebody that you you know that is doing something that you would want to do, try to reach out to them and ask them and yeah. ask for tips and they'd be very And it also maybe. depends of, on where you live because I know yeah. flutists who work in do chamber music but they have groups that are receiving mm -hmm. government grants but some countries it's yeah. easier to get those That's than others yeah. like there's there's a yeah there's a lot of different models there's not one single model when you're a musician exactly um Mario Ariana wants to know do wooden instruments allow more tone than composite ones well they're different i would say for sure i wouldn't say one is one allows more tone than the others like i for instance like those wooden those new flutes that we got that are uh, six hole flutes uh you know the tin whistle and the actual like irish flute both have six holes but they have a completely different type of tone you know and also project differently and have different types of stuff like that i would say it was the same for wooden flutes embouchure. yeah different embouchure as well yeah. that makes a big difference too yeah and like there are some wooden flutes that uh have a wooden um like head joint like a regular silver flute does you know so they try to mimic uh what so the like flute it's does. about it doesn't material affect the, the tone that yeah. much i think it does i think silver and wood are two different elements oh, yeah. so totally you different. you put air through it it's going to cause a different type of it's going to make the same tone it doesn't vibrate the same yeah, so the timber yeah. will be timber different. the timbers yeah exactly the timber so that's the uh, that's pretty much what uh, that is and it's always cool to experiment with those things uh, what else do we got here? What was uh, okay? Well, what do we got here? But I is it like because sometimes we want a wooden flute, but there's composites that are more resistant. I guess you know that maybe don't uh, crack and stuff like that. That can be a good thing, but then maybe the sounds a bit different mm -hmm. too. But I think they can sound similar because they probably vibrate similarly. It's like that that plastic flute sounded a little bit like a f sounded yeah. more like a wooden flute than a than um metal silver flute. flute yeah totally i agree yeah. that was a, that's so true like sometimes Good it's point. uh you can still get a sound that's pretty close mm -hmm. because of the way it vibrates maybe the density yeah but it's the, yeah exactly it's probably the density of the material mm -hmm. exactly uh oh and that goes uh is there a difference silver flute wants to know is there a difference between a pan flute and a tin flute well, pan flute, we don't have one. A pan flute pan is like, the, like you have yeah. to switch. There's and there are like different holes. Like doo -doo -doo it's because doo -doo. instead of having one one tube with holes yeah. to change the pitch, yeah. you have different length of, of yes. tubes. tubes, yeah. And then you, you switch tube yeah, you switch, instead yeah. of just... It's almost like a harmonica a little bit, but harmonica has reeds, but you have to do that switching oh, yeah, thing, you know. Bit. But yeah. not the same, obviously, but there, it's yeah, that switching yeah. mentality. Uh, and so tin whistles are different. six six notes, you know. You have six holes, uh, and yeah. But different. you do combinations. You get more than six notes, I guess. Yep, and you can have a chromatic um, pan flute, but and I don't know about chromatic tin whistles. I know there's just different keys of whistles. D is the most like used, and then there's a bunch of others. So you would have to get other flutes to play other keys. Yeah, I yeah. Guess. And so there you go, and those are usually different sizes. Uh, hi from Peru. It's okay. Hello. They're late, but it's all right. It's okay. This is a great, uh, it's a time to be together a little bit. Um, I saw your flute lying on the piano, uh, and now I wonder whether it's safe. Uh, so just keeping it lying there, will it damage the mechanism? I have cats and I generally don't keep anything unattended. Yeah. If you have pets and you have open space, <laughs> don't no. keep your flute out. We, this, the studio is in the basement, so... There's no air coming through, so that's always a good thing. You don't want to have a window near your flute and open. You can have cross breezes, and it can, um, it can dry up your your oil, and then cause rust and cause different types of mechanism problems. Um, but keeping it out like that, it's, it's totally fine. I would rather keep it horizontal than how a lot of people put it vertically on a flute stand. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, long term like if you're in an orchestra and you have a flute stand that's okay obviously but long term uh, oil tends to s go all the way down and then you start having a little bit less friction build up uh, less friction is up at the top than at the bottom mm. and you can cause a little problems like that over a course of time but horizontal is okay everything stays where it is gravity just sets it down where it's supposed to go yeah. but that's a 
uh, a pillow thing for a flute that we got from Powell Flutes, and uh, you just keep it out whenever you need to grab it. It's so taking yeah, taking a nap on the pillow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's taking a <laughs> but nap. But sometimes I put it away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But sometimes I leave it there. But yeah, yeah. There's no breeze. There's no. Yeah. You have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. Yeah. And if you have a pet, like yeah, no. and like you most, don't want yeah, your cats exactly. To no. Go in. And just fur, you know, it goes in the air and yeah. it can go on the mechanism. Like we have a hypoallergenic dog, but it's still, there's still hair everywhere. And we, we just try to not yeah. have them in the room. Yeah. She doesn't come here yeah. often and she doesn't yeah. lose a lot of hair. No, cause exactly. She has wool. Yeah, exactly. And like cases, I'm not a big, again, cases are not really made well in my honest opinion, because there's a huge slit and gap in the whole entire thing. No matter what, even if you close in, there's still air going through. So try again an extra bag that has like a zipper. If you really are in a place that you can't control the environment, like as much as you can, like you live in an open one open studio room and you want to open the window, um, get a zipper bag as well to overlap on the mm. case. That or usually adds a little bit more protection. Blanket or, or something. Or a little blanket. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. So those things can work. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, well, there's no questions in the chat right now, but you guys can talk amongst yourself. But we have three questions here from our people over on Patreon and over uh, through the comments uh, in other lessons so or in other videos. Uh, Mandy, she wants to know, and she's on Patreon, which is great. She's actually a new patron from today, which is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Uh, we'd like to ask about B-foot head joints, uh, which are not mainstream in the United Kingdom. I tried some and like their darker sound, though found it harder to get to top C. So I guess super C, like C7, I think. Um, but how frequently is the lower B required in repertoire? Uh, she's, I've never personally come across a piece in orchestra or solo which uses or that needs a low B. Uh, sometimes, yeah. like in uh, so Takemitsu, yeah. stuff like like Ravel. More... Ravel, there is in uh, not Ravel, no. but um, Debussy in Daphne and Chloe. There's a there's low B. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think it was remember. one of the first times, but maybe I'm mistaken. But it's usually more 20th yeah. century music and yeah. and 21st century yeah. music. Because before that, like even in I think Mozart, it stops on at the D because yeah. flutes didn't have the C yeah, that's right. joint yeah. back then. So exactly. Yeah, I'd just, say like five percent maybe. It's not much. Not much. 5% of repertoire has B, little mm, B. If so. If so, that's being yeah. generous, you know, so. But, you know, if you play a little bit of contemporary music or uh, more modern music, yeah. you might want to have it, but. Yeah. I. Th uh, but did you say foot joint or head joint? Cause I'm no, they say foot joint. Oh, okay, because I joint. think you said head joint. Oh, foot joint. I'm so sorry. B foot head I was joint. Like, B foot head joint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. You know, I was B like, foot, what is foot that? joint. I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's more... Is it more difficult to play the high register? No, it's not supposed to? Not supposed to. Because it really comes, I think, from my... It, it comes down to really just seal and and the way... Um, uh, the way... Well, Super C has different fingerings, like one or two fingerings, and you should facilitate... If you can't do the regular one, which is, you know, like C, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, right? And an A fat key, just yeah, and you know D, whatever it is. I like, just know one. Oh, no one. If yes. you need to facilitate, lower uh, your pinky on one of the on the C key or the C sharp key in your right hand. That can facilitate to make it sound if it doesn't sound. Also, it could be just speed, right? You need a lot of air to do that. Yeah, you super need support. C. Yeah, and you need to open in in your head, like open the mouth. Yeah, make it resonate. Yeah. There's yeah. a there's a couple alternate fingerings. I wouldn't say there's a lot. There's like maybe two or three. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you if you close it, yeah, then the air can. Yeah, you also have to hold down E flat, I think, right? The E flat key. Yeah, Dun you put like nee. as yeah. if you were doing a G sharp in a way, but you remove the the yes, thumb. Yes, the thumb. And you add the index finger. Yeah. Of the other hand, yeah. and then boom, yeah. So then you go for it. Exactly. <laughs> so hopefully that answers your question about uh, that. But maybe it's because of that flu. Maybe. Yeah. That the high note is more difficult. Maybe it's not necessarily. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But That's why I, I would say. But I knew a flutist yeah. who said like um, Galois. Patrick Galois. Mm -hmm. he, he, when I saw him like for a week of workshop, mm -hmm. he had different foot joints because he said that when he was playing Mozart, let's say he didn't like having the extra 
the extra flute mm-hmm. that he didn't need because it never goes under the, the mm-hmm. D. Because he said that the sound was better if it was, if if uh, he didn't have those extra notes it, when it was not needed. So he had like three different foot joints. Mm-hmm. But like, I probably don't have his budget, so I'll stick with my <laughs> one foot joint and yeah, yeah. live with it. And live with it that way, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Um, Karen wants to know, uh, sort of, we already answered this at the beginning of the show, but what age did you start playing the flute and what nurtures your love for the flute? That's the second part. The okay. So I started at 11 uh, years old and, um, what do I, um, love about the flute? Well, I remember when I was young and I started, I would tell my teacher the flute, it's like, it's like singing, but better, you know, I can... Mm-hmm. I can uh, do it faster and uh, it's a better sound and yeah because it's the only uh, wind instrument that doesn't have resistance at the mouth like you don't have anything in your mouth or anything buzzing it's really like singing Uh but then you can play super fast you can I don't know it's a nice instrument I love the sound I love it you also play piano too, so like yeah, I also there's play you have piano. a lot of music in general. I started with piano. Sang. I started with piano when uh, when I was uh, nine or ten, and then the flute, and uh, yeah, I I love music in general. So, but yeah, I think the flute is a nice instrument. Mm-hmm. Nice okay. sound. I like the sound. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And there's like other flutes, which is cool too. Like you don't have to limit yourself again to just your silver flute. You can go and try recorder. You could go and try, um, you know, tin yeah. whistles. There's a lot of side I blown like the flutes. Recordi- the recorder. Yeah, I like yeah. the Irish tin whistle and whistle in the flute. Irish flute, they're good. Yeah. yeah, recorders are fun. You have a bunch of recorders. We have a tenor recorder. We have a couple of recorders here. Yeah, we could do something with yeah, that. Yeah. We could do a little project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Team Recorder, too. They're a really good channel, too. Yeah. They're a really good channel for recorders. She's really great, Sarah. She's a, that's a, if you want to learn recorder, that's a, that's the place. But yeah. uh, we want to learn a little bit of recorder soon more. Like, you know recorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But not like. No, not like virtual. I'm not a virtual yeah, so of the recorder yeah, yeah. at all. But I wonder how long it would take to kind of get to a point that you can just pick up something and play something at least fun, you know? I think I could do it now because I know the fingerings pretty well. Yeah. But. Wouldn't be at uh, no no, but I mean, level, but, but, but I mean, yeah. a fun level. No, not yeah. their level. I meant just your own. Yeah, you know, pleasure. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? What is the best? Ad Ray two fourteen wants to know what is the best way to learn a song in a new key. I was taught B flat for grade five to grade eight, and now that school is out, I'm trying to learn new keys before grade nine. But it's hard to remember to switch fingerings for the accidentals, or like learning a scale. I think is what they meant. Okay, so. Maybe if it's tough for you to remember your scales, write down the name of the notes, you know, write down the notes and follow it. And then the next step would be to just um, write, let's say, G major, F sharp. So you know that when you get to the F, you have to play F sharp and you can write it down. Then after a while, you you know, you should start to remember on your own. But I don't know if you're talking about scales or transposing melodies. Mm -hmm. But if you're transposing melodies, do the same thing. Like, let's say you're learning a... You want to learn how to transpose. So you play a easy melody on, in C major. You play your C major scale. You play your melody. And then you play, let's say, your G major scale. You play. And then you, you know that if you have a F, it's going to be F sharp. And now C becomes G. Mm-hmm. And D becomes A. And like it's all this transposition thing. It's a cool thing to do. I do yeah. that sometimes with some students when I start teaching. Mm-hmm more theory so yeah. that you know you get oh it's just it's just a um, a system you know that you can just move yeah exactly it's a pattern you know that yeah. you just move to different places yeah. it can be overcome with a little bit of practice and but you know. it's, it's about s- not trying to cram everything no, in your head at yeah, once one, you know yeah. go by increments maybe mm-hmm. learn three sharps three flats right. and stop there yeah. make sure you know them well and then add on you know mm-hmm. and if it's difficult maybe you need to get a theory book or something and learn the or just like learn the order of sharps and flats mm-hmm. those types of things mm-hmm. 
I'll put that in the next book that I'm working on. All those little things of how to find the scales and, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that you understand a little bit of, about those things. Totally. Uh, a couple more questions. So if you guys have any questions, just be sure to let us know in the comments, uh, in the live chat, I mean. Uh, just to kind of split the show a little bit. You have a studio, a live uh, teaching studio online now it's all online right now because of the yeah. situation we're in but if you guys want to have lessons with emily you can definitely email us at info at the flu channel.com and we can send you the rates and uh, it's been pretty fun you've had a couple uh really interesting uh like oh yeah I a love lot it. of different students it's from yeah. all ranges from beginner to advanced and it's really uh yeah. it's a lot of fun for sure so definitely email us at info at the flu channel.com and we can get you all set up with that. You can have one lesson or you can have a bunch, you know, and you can spread them out as much as you uh, as yeah. you wish. And you really work uh, towards their goals and yeah, what they want. Totally. Some people want a lesson every week and it's totally cool. Some people want four or five lessons because yeah. they have a spe specific goal in mind. And once they get it, they're happy with it and they move on. Maybe they mm -hmm. come back. Maybe like, yeah, we're very open about your own goals. That's, yeah. that's the point of exactly. it all. You know, it's about you yeah learning and yeah. what are what do you want to learn but also it's pretty quick for me to assess what needs yeah. to be worked on so if you don't know exactly you just want to improve yeah like it's pretty fast for yeah. me to see oh this is what we should work on yeah. first and you know yeah people have found a, it's a really worthwhile investment to uh to, to have you go through and be assessed and stuff like that if you can't do that it's you can fun. also check the book too which is at musigy.com also you can made your transcription of paganini on there too yeah and those are all on there at musigy.com m-o-u-s-o-g-y.com yeah because yeah. Uh, all the paganinis uh, that i was seeing for the flu mm -hmm. spe specifically some of the uh, some of the newer editions variations that oh. are at the end of the of yeah. the caprice 24 mm -hmm. the way they were using what the violin do does mm -hmm. that you can't necessarily do on the flute mm -hmm. um you know i yeah. i found my way to do it so mm -hmm. yeah if you yeah. want to try this way exactly there's different uh, versions different ways yeah so exactly uh i saw a question up there in the live chat uh clay xavier he has a great question and something we'll definitely talk about more in depth uh, later on uh, in new videos which is coming up soon uh tips for recording flute mics and positioning so a lot of people i might get a little uh, flack about that but um i've been a recording engineer for a long time so um i've learned i've gone through all the different types of ways of recording and some i've gotten rid of and don't need to do anymore because it's just i found better ways a lot of people do the whole blue yeti mic in front of the flute uh, mouthpiece or they do a condenser mic a few feet away from the flute um if you're and like they're in a regular room you know with no treatment or no awareness of how much echo it does and what it really does in the room because most mics they record also the room noise too um, but there are some mics that are just as affordable as some of those condenser mics that really isolate uh, flute sound, particularly flute sound. And the short condenser microphones are the ones we use all the time, and they look like little pencils. And those are really, really great uh, microphones with either a cardioid or a super cardioid um, pattern. And I usually point them right at the keys, actually. Um, that's where all the sound's kind of billowing out, like a pipe, you know? If you put holes in a pipe and you blow through it it's gonna, and you put your hand over the holes, you're going to feel air everywhere. I'm sorry, what's a cardioid? <laughs> Super, it's, a, it's, the pa it's, the, it's the pattern that, the, the, the mic pickup pattern, like what, where it picks up sound. It's like a, uh, it can be a big globe heart shape, like on our microphones here. It can go like this. And that's where it's picking up. Oh, okay. That's a pickup pattern. There's a cardioid, which is like uh, a certain type of like, it looks like a mushroom or a heart. Oh, and I see. And then there's super cardioid, which is a, a lot more narrower. Okay. So you don't get any sound in the back. You don't get any, okay. you only get sound in the front. And they usually show a map. Every single microphone you buy, you get a map or a, a diagram of what it does. Yeah. It, it, it where grabs. it can pick up, where it yeah. grabs. Yeah, exactly. And the frequencies it can grab in that pattern too. Okay. So like shotgun microphones have a super narrow one. So because wherever you point it, that's where it's going to pick up sound. It's not going to pick up anywhere else. It's going to pick up less in fact. Um, but um, that's how we kind of record things. Uh, we also just record our voices with the same type of microphone too, uh, minus the podcast where we would use bigger dynamic microphones that they use in radio. 
but we use condenser microphones with phantom power and we uh we hang them just out of shot you know and i think it sounds we also better pad like as well i'm not very good like you're the pro yeah but i think it sounds better when you don't put the microphone too close from the mouth exactly because you get a lot of shh oh yeah that If you're playing in a hall, no one will hear no, this exactly. because they're far enough. But if you record or too even, close, yeah. you get a lot of that. And or even five feet away, five feet away, you almost hear nothing. Or through yeah, a door, when you're here through a door, you hear nothing. It because yeah, it's here too. Like I don't hear your shushes. I don't hear the mic. Might pick those things up if you put the mic very close, because it's really picking up all that energy that's being dispersed from that one point mm -hmm. of of sound. Uh, so if, I always say, if you have to have, if you're not video recording, uh, you could put the microphone at least. 12 inches and beyond like you can go from 12 inches from the from the keyholes to as far as you might put it back farther you're only going to get more room noise necessarily it depends on the microphone and the pickup pattern but um and also how you isolate your room if you're in a room that's uh has padding like this or a carpet you know we all don't have a you know a grammy award-winning studio but uh, you can do a lot if you can isolate enough and not make enough and not have enough uh not re record not enough, enough room not noise too much room noise room noise and, and vibrations uh, and noise like that um echo and, echo all, that and all that uh the drier you get it i always say the better because then you can use post-production on a on audacity or on audition adobe audition um but the thing with uh, acoustic instruments is that you don't really need much in the terms of adjusting in a, like a equalizer um in fact you shouldn't because you really get the sound that you're looking for and then you can add echo and you can lose a couple frequencies that don't that are just not there because you're register you're recording it from somewhere else in the room but those are like the tips that i would say the main thing is um short condenser microphones are great for flute they're great for violin i kind of got that from like esther piazzola's recordings and also his live shows because how he mic'd himself and how he mic'd um his violinist is very similar if not the same as what we use and we don't use expensive microphones you can buy under hundred dollar microphones with an audio interface to plug in like a zoom if you have a zoom you can plug it in there and record there um the or you can You get something a little bit better that can actually uh, have enough juice and power because not every device is made equally to record the sound um, a lot of them just go at consumer levels so you're not getting the full power of that microphone that you're getting that's worth a hundred dollars you know i know some people that record it on sure sm57s which are like the most standard microphones dynamic microphones in the world and they record really well on them because they get They buy that cheap $60 microphone, but then they buy a very, very good recording device that has a lot of power, and you can use that microphone. It can sound as good as anything else if you're in a quiet room. But yeah, so uh, also just test. Test out what you like, you know, and see how um, what type of sounds are you looking for? What type of um, recordings are you looking for? You know, what are you trying to emulate? Do you want a studio recording sound, or do you want more of a live studio sound? So... Hopefully that answers your question. We're going to do a big video about that, about how we kind of record things and and how you can use various different microphones and different types of budgets. And we're going to teach you a bit more about those things, which is really fun. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit. But without showing you, you know, how we actually move in, stuff like that, that will show in a, in a future video, which is really cool. See any questions there? Let's see. Uh, there was a couple that flew by. You guys are asking, uh, we'll, ask, we'll answer like two or three more and then... There's like, uh, oh boy. Try to put a question mark. That really helps because then I can look for question marks and then mm -hmm. um, then I can help with the questions. A lot of people are answering other people's questions though, which is great. How much is Emily's flute? Uh, it was assessed uh, pretty high, like over 10. No, no? 8 to 10. 8 I to don't 10, know. yeah. I thought it was assessed eight for that. 8 to 10,000, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Canadian. Uh, but that model doesn't exist anymore. Models. Yeah, but that model doesn't even exist anymore. But Prima Sanko makes very similar yeah, models. Yeah. yeah. I'm same happy thing. With that. Yeah, it's a great flute, but the head I've joint's not the same. Yeah, you've had it for 20 years, and the head joint's not the original head joint. It's the, no. uh, it's a Wimberley head joint, which is a custom made head joint from another company. Which and is he the, doesn't make head joints anymore. No, and he's based in, in, in Nova Halifax. Scotia. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a Canadian. Very cool head joint. Yeah. I like um, it. I like my little. 
setup. Yeah, your setup's really good. And yeah. always uh, when you're getting a flute, you know, like try different combinations if you can. You know, that head joint might not be the head joint you want, but the body is perfect. So, you know, with Flute Center in New York, I know that you can probably or get a couple of joints too. If uh, you want to work on your sound, you feel like your head joints, like you, sometimes you don't have to change the whole flute. You can just change the head joints. Yeah. That, that, that's what I do. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly it. Um, I know a bunch of people have also tried the uh, the Flute Center of New York's trial program, which still is working right now worldwide. They're not open to the public, but they are shipping out flutes still. So, and there is a, if you call them, they can help you if you uh, mention our code. And mm -hmm. they're all experts at the flute as well. And they can really know, they have all the flutes there. So they know, they can tell you what's available and what's not. Yeah, and the uh, we have a code with them. It's TFC, and if you yeah. use that code, it helps us out, and it gives you some perks like longer warranty, and you can try more flutes. And so a lot of people have been using it. Thank you so much. And if uh, you call them or you go on their website, flutesforsale.com, please uh, use it, TFC. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, like, you know, like people get a bit, uh, you know, I was just reading a little bit in the chat, and they were saying, you know, flutes can be expensive. Most musical instruments can be expensive, but also you can just start off with a $500 flute or even the $100 flute. Yeah. Just start and um, I, eventually upgrade. But there's people who have $1,000 flutes that play. Like, that it's play. all about the pleasure that you get from yes. it. Yesterday I was g giving totally. a lesson to uh, the daughter of one of my good friends uh, because it's, uh, you know, she's bored. She doesn't go to school. I'm like, you want a flute lesson? And we mm. gave her a flute that we got uh, from, uh, was it E-Star? Yep. And I said, oh, it's a beginner flute. She's like, it's the best flute I've ever had because she yeah. plays in school. And in school, you know, sometimes oh, yeah. they share flutes and it's not necessarily well maintained. That flute, exactly. like, she's so happy about that flute and she makes it mm. sound good. I was like, wow, it's that flute mm. that you're playing right now? Mm. And it's all about the pleasure that you get, you know, and yeah, it's expensive, but let's say you, uh, you, let's say you, you play for fun and you, but you still want a good instrument. You put three yeah. to $5,000. It's a lot of money. I, I agree. Yeah. But if you keep it for 20 years and you have all that pleasure out mm -hmm. of it, you know? Oh yeah. Pays for itself. Yeah. Yeah. Because totally. like you can spend a lot on smoking. You can spend mm -hmm. a lot on, uh, alcohol yep. you can spend a lot on you totally. might not notice because it's 20 bucks here 20 bucks there mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's a whole uh does it make you happy you know yeah, but yeah exactly sometimes you can find some good flutes for a okay price but if you see it on the long run mm -hmm. you know it's not uh yeah then keep a little bit of a budget to maintain it obviously but mm -hmm. yeah there's some very good sounding flutes for Two thousand bucks. Oh yeah, there is for yeah. sure. Genesis, she wants to know why does my C sharp sound horrible? Should I practice with the original fingerings or use harmonic slash alternative fingerings? I'm uh, relearning after twelve years. C sharp is a problem for a lot of people. C sharp is too high, so yeah. practice with a tuner. Yep. And try to f this way it will help you. Know where if the not, core of that note is. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's a note that's not uh, as you said the core. You know, mm -hmm. it's like a doesn't have. A, timber that yeah. much it's like uh, yeah you want to so know you what your c sharp sounds like do it with your nose yeah. almost like yeah give it more timber yeah that's how i do yeah it. that's how you do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but there's a uh, um yeah. you can also instead of putting your pinky you can use your three fingers of the right hand and it makes it lower is that it mm -hmm. yeah that's that's it i think yeah like it's um yeah it you have to get to know that note that's like one of the notes you have to get to know so well that Whenever it comes out, no matter if it's thin or anything, you know it's always in tune. I'd rather have the note in tune than it not. Yeah. And it be thin. Uh, intonation and timber are very linked in our brains. Oh, yeah. So if the if the timber is not there, you might it, it will feel out of tune even if it is, you know. And if it's out of tune, it will feel like the timber is not there. Like they're so intertwined. So, yeah. yeah work on them together exactly um yeah you know c sharp don't feel bad because like throughout my whole entire life i'm sure with yours c sharp has been part of our life as a yeah. thing that's been talked about all the time and then after a while i was working so like 
I didn't work with a tuner for a long time because my teacher was like, one of my teacher was, oh, um, don't work with that. You have to use your ears. Yeah, but what if you don't have a reference point? Then yeah. it's kind of, my ears don't know what it's supposed to sound totally. like. So mm -hmm. uh, whatever. <laughs> but I was, I knew that it was too high, but then I was making it too low because I was so stressed that I was mm -hmm. overcompensating on the other, in the other direction sometimes, you know? Yeah. Like instead of being stressed, you can also just check and yeah. know that it's there. And and like, as you said before, drones are good too. Yeah, because drones you don't want to just use your eyes. Obviously, you want to use your ears and develop that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if I had a master class with Jorn Markison, we spent like half an hour working on C Sharp. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people. You don't want to mention C Sharp in a class because that can be like a half an hour just wasted well, not wasted like you're working on it but i mean i think it's more efficient to uh do it regularly work like take out your tuner once in a while when you practice and check you know the tendencies of your flute then to talk about it for 30 minutes yeah. in a row just do it every every time you play or every couple of days when you practice yeah. take it out totally. your tuner and just you know yeah. work on those things yeah that's exactly it but like mm. we just talked about it for a while yeah like i know we can talk about stuff forever <laughs> and forever ever. but if you want to get better at it just do yeah, it yeah, yeah. every every day or every yeah, couple yeah, yeah. of days exactly <laughs> so you know take take the experiences in those things and just learn that and all those things like that and that could be super helpful so yeah, I think that's it. There's I didn't if I missed a question, let us know and then maybe we'll pick it up. Uh but we'll do some closing uh we'll just close it off right now. But if you have a question and we missed it, just uh, write them down really quick in the chat and we can do that. But we do this every uh last Sunday of the month. Yeah. And uh we're gonna be continuing to do that. If you guys wanna help us out um financially, you can go on Patreon and become a patron. Um I know it's hard times right now, but if you can do that, that's even more greatly appreciated. Uh you can uh, donate as little as two dollars a month and yeah, it's a, it's a great thing on Patreon. You can contact us through there directly with that, with being a patron, and you can ask us questions. We're usually more uh, we're more on that and being able to answer questions than on the channel, uh, unless we make a video, obviously. But So yeah, you can go to patreon.com slash the flute channel. Uh, all that is in the description box, I think. And um, what else did we miss here? Anything else? No, I think we talked about our lessons. Yeah, if and you the want book lessons, yeah. On musogy.com and yeah. our code with the Flute Center of New York, TFC. Yeah. And uh, we, have a, we have a store as yeah, well. Yeah, we have a store, all of our merch. I'm going to add some new merch soon um, where you can see like our hat here in the background over there. Yeah. There's our hat. There's the book. There's the mugs. We have a bunch of mugs. We also have some leggings for like yoga and stuff with yeah. the Mozart Flute Concerto on it. That's really funny and cool. And we have a um, poster. With poster. The oh, yeah, the flute fingering poster. That's, yeah, that's been selling so well. Part. If you want to have know about all your fingerings all and even scales. trills, uh, scales, trills too are on there, I think. And uh, there's a black version, black poster version, which a lot of people have been buying, and also the colorful version. And that too has been selling very well. So you can go to store.theflutechannel.com. And that's where you can get everything there. And shipping has been pretty good from what I've been told. I think everything's still running as smooth as you can with them. And that's worldwide too. And it's very affordable. And it's cool to decorate your room if you're doing some new decorations in your new studio. And uh, if you want to learn your scales, it's yeah, there. Yeah, if you want to learn your scales, <laughs> you just go. <laughs> and or your fingerings. Or yeah. Like you practice, it's there on your exactly. wall. So it's practical yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people have done that. And that's really cool. So, yeah. Um, and that's really it. Uh, watch our videos. We have a bunch of new videos that we put out recently. Also, watch our backlog. We have over 300 videos of uh, various different topics. I know a lot of people ask questions about certain topics that we have covered. Um, search it on our YouTube channel and find us there. And um, leave us comments on this video. Also, like the video because liking the video really does help. And the most important thing of all, if you're all here still and you're watching, go on your iTunes and go and... Um, uh, rate our podcast there on itunes it's super yeah, important go rate pushes, yeah pushes it up yeah exactly yeah. rate it and also if you want it would be amazing leave a comment we might read them out on the show because i love reading some of them some of them are very cool and uh write uh, like your musical journey or how you like the podcast or how you like the channel but we're definitely on itunes and go rate us on itunes that um, does go a long way for us if you can't help us any other way that helps us a long way with this podcast and that's super helpful 
let me look one more time over this and see if there's any more questions. Uh, more. Oh, Heavenly Luke wants to know one thing. We'll answer this one, and then we will say goodbye to all of you guys. are so amazing. It's been a great day. All you guys have been talking to each other. Emily, do you have, uh, what's that, pelletries, uh, fingerings for flute or something? If so, what's the main fingering he shows you for C-sharp 5? Wow, that's very specific. I don't know that book. I'll, I'll don't, I don't know about that. I don't know that book either. I don't know. I don't know. I know there's a lot of information out there, but uh, C-sharp 5, so that's like, is that the highest one? No, second one. Lowest one. I always add fingers to my C sharp. I'm going to tell you now. That's one of my guilty pleasures, is I do that. I add sometimes yeah, when I add can't. Fingers, it's going to lower it. I add fingers in the right. I don't know like which octave is that. I yeah. don't usually and then put a number. I don't. I. I go first me, octave, second octave, third octave. Yeah. Uh, that's how I do it. Yeah. yeah. So for me, there's no C sharp five on the flute because like my first C sharp is one, yeah. and the second one is two. Yeah. Like there's the modern, there's the. But I know yeah. like there's numbers on the yeah. piano. I've never learned it. Yeah. I don't know why. Like I've seen that recently. And I yeah. was like, oh, I never learned like exactly. that. Exactly. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I know there's the. I have. I think I have that book, but I have the Robert modern Dick. Modern fingerings for flute. Yeah, I don't have that one, but I have the Robert Dick one. I don't think it's even in print anymore, and it's all the fingerings. It might be that a variation of that poetry book because I know that book, but I've never. I don't own it. But usually, when a note is too so many high, different variations. You, you add some fingers. Yeah. Or half even fingers. If, or half fingers. Yeah. Just the. That's where it comes without, to like, yeah. without going on top of the hole. Yeah. And it, uh, it helps, you yeah. know. Yeah. It really comes down to just like it's a customization of your own fingerings because not your own. Your own fingerings might not work for somebody else. I remember like half the fingerings in master class that I ever saw that were new fingerings. I never used them after. I wrote them in, but I never used them because I adjusted or I figured out another way. It might have helped me springboard to another new fingering, but I would say a lot of the fingerings that I've seen. I never really used those new ones. But again, it's a customizational thing for your own self of a Yeah. How you use but it. it's interesting also to understand the principles of it. You yeah, know, you wanna totally lower, you add you add fingers, stuff yeah. like that, you know. Exactly. Cool. So hopefully that helps. But uh yeah. So we'll see each other uh again next sunday or the next last uh sunday next of month. may yeah next month and then we have new videos coming out soon some new music videos which is gonna be really exciting and uh yeah if you guys have any questions leave us uh, leave them down below and be sure to rate us over on apple podcasts thanks everyone so much it's been such Thanks a great live stream practice listening. and stay healthy yeah for sure <laughs>